a dialogue between your mind through your eyes and the outside world properly channeled has the potential to augment and amplify human intelligence. Our next speaker is Jim Margraff, the founder of iFluence, who will speak about and demonstrate the inspirational implications of transforming intent into action through your eyes. Please join me in welcoming Jim to the stage. Thanks. Continue. In 1998, a neurologist uh, by the name of Dr. William Torch sat down with an individual who was locked in. Uh, the man had a neurological disorder. He was, uh, had quadriplegia and couldn't speak. And Dr. Torch uh, worked with him and looked at him and said, um, how, can I, uh, how can I create technology to allow this man to communicate? So what he did is he went to Radio Shack and he purchased some parts and built a blink detector and mounted it on this man's head so he could blink by communicating with Morse code. Um, over the next 15 years, he raised about $15 million in financing from the Department of Defense, Department of Transportation, looked at uh, wearable eye-tracking technologies, and developed seven generations over that period of time. In the meantime, I had the good fortune to have uh, worked initially in telecommunications at a company called Stratacom, and then I moved to uh, uh, working on uh, a tool to take technology and make a flatter 3D surface touch responsive with high resolution and created an interactive globe. Took that idea, flattened it out, and put paper on it to teach kids to read. And I created a device called the Leap Pad. And uh, from there, um, looked at that technology with different forms of interaction and watched how kids' eyes looked at the paper as they used this pointing device and decided we could advance further if I could let people read, write, speak, and listen. So I started another company called Livescribe, and I made a smart pen. So all this led up to my fascination with how humans interact with different technologies with their eyes. And I studied their eyes as they looked at paper, and then they began writing. So in 2012, I met Dr. Torch, and I was looking at the work he had done in eye tracking, looked at the market on eye tracking, and was fascinated, but said, all the eye tracking has been largely to observe the eyes moving as one consumes information. And so we've done market research on this. We do uh, web research, usability studies. But I said, there must be some way to transform a user's intent into action through their eyes. So began doing some research and uh, began looking at markets. And the markets I looked at were, first of all, wearables. I looked at HCI. I looked at AR and VR. And at the center of every one of these markets with all the products was one concept and one word. And it was intent. Because everything begins with intent. We choose to do something. I want to buy, I want to communicate, I want to play, to socialize. It's all about intent. So how could we use your eyes somehow to transform that intent into some meaningful action? So, looked further, and uh, let's see. Um, I looked at the HMDs at the time. And at the time, Google Glass was out and was looking at other HMDs. And the challenge that I saw was the method of input for these, these head-mounted displays was largely uh, head, hands, and voice. And I said, there must be some other way, because I think the HMDs are fundamentally incomplete without using your eyes. So, let me turn on my uh, power. So, um, that, on the other hand, using your eyes is only meaningful if you can achieve certain things, certain, certain abilities, such as you need to be able to pan, to zoom, to scroll, to input, to play a game, to, um, to communicate with other people or avatars. So how do you do this with your eyes in a meaningful way, just with your eyes? And, and you have to then look at the method by which you, you, you communicate or you, can tr you transform intent into action is now all about the experience. If the experience feels good, it's great. If it doesn't, it's terrible. So started reading and started looking at the, all the types of headsets that were emerging. So we've got certainly AR, VR, MR, and if you look at the pictures, it's just it's amazing to see the, the range of displays we have, the form factors that we have. We're moving into mobile VR right now. We've got some tethered platform headsets. But I had to look at the technology and say, we need to do basic eye tracking in these devices with low power, but then we have to do eye interaction. So the first technical challenge were these. We had to say, well, if I'm going to point a camera at my eyes, and point a camera at the world, connect the two, I'm going to look at features in my eyes to be able to discern what's relevant. Okay, that's a first step. And that takes a lot of software, which takes a lot of processing. So we have to be robust, first of all, to the view of the eyes that we have. As we look at them, if there are occlusions, we have to deal with it. Eyelashes, droopy eyelashes, mascara, contact lenses, glasses, all those we have to overcome to be able to track features that are relevant as the eyes move around. 
then we have to look at the environment itself and look at the infrared light that's making up the environment, okay? Because we've got lots of noise as you step outside. And typically, with eye tracking, you'll throw light towards your eyes, and you'll see, um, you'll see the features of your eyes. But um, what you get is reflections of other IR as soon as you step outside, infrared light. So we had to solve that problem. Then we had to be low power, we had to be low MIPS, and we had to be able to put it, actually mount it in a headset and run on an embedded processor. And this just hadn't been done before. So we, we proceeded in this, in this area. Um, and finally, we looked at, at the experience itself. And this was both where we started and where we ended. Because we said, um, how do I make this experience meaningful? So this is a picture of, of the hardware that we actually developed. We started with a large circuit board running on four cores of a quad-core i5, and we ran there for a while, and we got it smaller and smaller, eventually ran on a, on a Panda board, then a Dart board, and we were able to run in, in a small amount of MIPS, on the order of two to 300 MIPS. We also ran in an order of ten, tens of milliwatts of power, so we got small and low power and, uh, and made some good progress. Then we went to this notion of what we call the iBrain connection, because at the start, we said it's all about user experience if we're going to transform intent into action. So what does this mean? Well, we studied, and we looked at, at the biggest challenge, because to begin with, if we looked at the way eye tracking had been used for control before, if you read the literature, it was quite dismissive. It said, basically, you want to use your eyes for interacting? Don't bother. Pretty much all you can do is you can use Wink, you can use Dwell, um, and that's about all you have to work with. And I said, there has to be some other way. So I went back to work that I had, had been involved with, with the Leap Pad and with Globe and with writing, and started to watch people and read papers, studied the eye, studied the, the, uh, the light flow to the foveal area, to your retinal area, back to your occipital region, looked at timing, the way you respond to stimulus outside your area, and said, OK, how do we, how do we uh, uh, come up with a way to interpret this? And so we had to overcome these two issues, blinking and dwelling. So what we did was, in looking at the eye, we studied the, the parts of the eye, the light flow, as I said. And then we came up with this one principle. We said, if we're going to create eye interaction, we're going to let your eyes do what your eyes do. Gonna force, we're not going to force them to swirl around or to dwell and gaze at something or to make you uncomfortable or fatigued. We said, that's a starting point. Beyond that, these are, 12, these are the shorthand descriptions of 12 laws we came up with we call affluence laws that define this approach we took towards interaction with your eyes. And each, behind each of these is a paragraph and multiple pages of a lot of work over many years. So let's see if I can uh, move now to some hardware. And it looks like we're good. So let's pull up if we could. Um, OK, I'll come over here. And this is a, by the way, this is now, this is going to be a first of a kind demo. So what I've mounted is a pair of ODG glasses. These are augmented reality glasses from Osterhout Design Group. They're equipped with our technology. I have them plugged into an external battery because we've, in this case, we've just wrapped, retrofit our technology on top of the glasses. And we put eye tracking with eye interaction on the glasses. In my hand is the, both the battery and a dartboard. We're running some processing there, but we're running on low MIPS and low power. So I've never done a demo like this the first time because I'm going to put the glasses on. You'll see me interact. You'll see the results of what I see. So right now on the screen, you can see the, this 4x3 grid. I'm going to begin interacting with it. And um, we're going to do a close-up of my eyes so you can watch my eyes as I interact. And hopefully this all works. OK, so here we go. So first of all, can you see my eyes? Have we brought that up? OK, is it working? Can you see my eyes? I'm going to begin moving. Um, I'll just put this in my pocket, okay? So right now, I'm moving my eyes around, okay? And I'm going to move them counterclockwise, okay? Hands in my pocket. I'll keep my hands out. There's no clickers. There's no voice. So I'm just going to move counterclockwise consistently one by one. The airplane, photo gallery, uh, health records, um, eye gaze, a grid, settings, uh, uh, gaze casting, a checklist, weather, uh, texts, and retail. Would someone like to tell me something to look at, please? Retail, the shopping cart, something else. Uh, the airplane. I heard weather as well. By the way, notice, if I choose to, I can go from corner to corner like this. And right now, watch my eyes, because I'm going to move between the red cross and the, uh, the eye. And I'm just moving my eyes back and forth. And can you see my eyes shifting? Dave, can you see them? OK, great, thanks. So now the question is, so here I am, and I want to interact. So for instance, let's go to the airplane. OK. So what I can do is launch the airplane and find out what time there's a flight from, say, Reno to Hawaii. 
On the other hand, um, let me go home again. And if you watch my eyes, you'll see them moving around. Let me check the weather there. And um, it's a nice 81 degrees in Maui. It's 55 low an hour ago. Let me check this out. I'm going to go home again. In the upper right corner, there's a photo album. And um, there, I've got some pictures. So you can see in the upper left corner, this is a favorite picture of mine. Um, there's my wife on the right side. This is our team after we closed our Series A. And we, my wife and I took our team to Hawaii. We had some partying. And while we were over there, I'll zoom into the next picture. You can see we were on a hike, on a hike in a bamboo forest. And um, also, at our office, everywhere in the office, we have everyone's picture with their eyes with uh, some notes beneath it. Um, if I want to, I can change pages. And here's an interesting one. There's some people on our team. By the way, I'm doing all this, as you can see, with my eyes. No winking, no waiting. Just eye contact. So in this case, there's some people. I'm going to pull down a menu, and I'm going to turn on recognition. So now I can see, oh, there's Steve, there's Ben, and uh, there's Zoe. And any time I want to, as you've seen, I can just return home. So let's try a couple other things. Uh, now we're talking about, we've, we've got social, enterprise, consumer. In this case, I'm a doctor, and I want to be hands-free. So there's Eric, and I want to check out Eric's charts. Protocols, insurance, confidential information. There's current conditions. So why is he here? Well, he tells us that, so I'm reading right now. Notice, I'm reading Eric Johnson, ID 100668, description left, severe pain in left foot, test. He had a test done with an x-ray. Um, let's take a look at that x-ray. Ah. So he had a bad break. You know what? Let me go back two screens, because back here there was confidential information. Well, if it's confidential, it's going to take a picture of my eye, because my iris is a better identifier than my fingerprint. It validates that it's me and says, OK, it's Jim. Give him access and find out that Eric had I had a substance abuse problem. Poor guy. OK, let me go home again, which I did. And uh, another example, which is fun, is uh, now I've got a checklist I've launched. This is fun, because we, had a, uh, we talked to some C-level execs at an energy company. And now, the way that, the way that uh, procedural adherence works today on an oil rig is that uh, individuals use a clipboard, a magic marker, and a piece of paper. That's how they capture information on checklists. So we showed them you could be wearing a pair of glasses, and now there's my glasses. Um, notice, by the way, I didn't calibrate. I can take the glasses on or off. I can move them around. It just keeps working. But I'm going to say, check fire extinguisher. So what do I want to do? Well, I've, I find out that I'm supposed to verify that they're accessible. I'm going to mark it done. I'll continue. Now it says check fuel tank lines, check for leaks. But there's this picture here. Let me zoom into that. OK, I can see it. Now I know what I'm supposed to do. So let me go back, and I'll mark that one done, and I'll go on to the next one. This one's interesting. You're going to be able to discern something about what's going on here at this point. Because now it says record pump pressure. It says enter the pounds per square inch. So I'm going to keep, see the keyboard right there. I'm going to launch the keyboard. And I'm just going to start to enter the numbers in order, one through five. So I'm entering with my eyes. In fact, let me go ahead and delete these. And uh, I'll delete all of them. And now we'll, can someone give me some numbers, please? OK, I heard up in the front row, I heard 400. So we got 400 entered. So when I want to, again, I can leave. I keep 400, I mark it done. I'll leave the application, I'll go on. So a couple more things. Um, this one's interesting. Here we've got now a, uh, a text message, um, a, a text stream. So I'm texting. This is a text of my partner, Dave. It says, hey, how are you doing? He says, great. Do you have the demo working? I say, almost. He says, send me an iMessage when you can. And I say, let me go ahead and reply. And I'll say, sure. So Dave is sitting in the audience. Um, and that bell right there was him getting the message. So in fact, let me do something different. Dave, this time I'm going to dictate. And let's see if this transcribes what I'm saying in real time. So it did. I liked it. I could have edited it with my eyes as well. In this case, I just sent it. So now he'll get an actual message. Um, I'll tell you, I want to have some fun. What, how much time do I have left? Um, because what I wanted to do is see, I put Ori in here. <laughs> Ori, are you in the audience? And if you are, can you tell us if you get this message? And your name is kind of munged. <laughs> kind of money. <laughs> it's always a risk. So he, wherever he is, he just, is, he just received that message. But to hit him even harder, let's go to retail that somebody asked about before. Let's turn this on. And in this case, I heard a bell. Uh -huh. In this case, um, what I've done now is I've turned on a camera so you can see where I'm looking. It's pretty bright up here. It's pretty dark out there. But I'm going to do something here. Ooh, it's bright. Um, I'm going to uh, turn this on, and I'm going to look at the picture and take a picture of the chocolates. So in this case, we took the picture. This is live. I'm connected to the net right now. 
And that image was sent up to a service online. It was looking for a match. If it found it, it'll give us a tag back. If it gives the tag back, we take it and give it to Amazon. That's live. That went back to Amazon. They gave us the information. We put it in the app, which is very small. We said for Roche, so let me go ahead and say, let's buy these. To whom do I want to ship it? Ah, let me ship it to Ori. There's his address. Let's order it. Um, oh, bummer. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't let that happen. Sorry, I'm going to do one more time because I do want to send him chocolates. That was my fault. OK, so same thing. It's going to look at the internet. We'll see if we're still connected rapidly. If it does, we'll get it. And um, um, sometimes, by the way, it pulls up random things. Let's hope that doesn't happen just now, and it can find the chocolates again. And we'll give it a few more seconds. I got them. OK, one more time. Let's ship it to Ori. Let's go Ori. Let's ship it. OK, it's sending and confirming. And there the order's placed. OK, so I'll leave it. So Ori, wherever Ori is, he's going to get some chocolates delivered to his address. That's live. Um, the last thing I'll show is, is in the lower left corner, um, this one's interesting. This is we call gaze casting. And I know it's awfully dark here. But you can see now not only where my head is pointing, but you can see where I'm looking. Hello there. Hey there, guy. Uh, OK, so we got people waving back at us. And if I want, I could pull a menu down and show what this would be like if I was now on a helicopter. So now I'm a surgeon, and maybe I'm an EMT on a helicopter, and I'm looking at the chest, and the doctor back at headquarters or at the hospital says, don't look there, look down at his knees. That's where the contusion is, and so forth, and I could continue. So that's a demo. By the way, the way that works, this language we've created, an eye interaction, it's a new model. And this can be taught. If you put our headset on, we put you in a tutorial, and you would be doing everything that I'm doing as fast as I'm doing it in less than two minutes as fast as I'm doing it. So I've developed UX, UX, UI design for now near 30 years. I've never seen an interface adopted more rapidly. And um, I believe I've been told to wrap up, but we are iFluence. If you're interested in speaking with us, you can check out our website. But um, I believe the future of all HMDs will engage the eyes and the brain in a way that will really propel us forward to enhance uh, our fundamental potential and ultimately our empathy with one another. Thanks very much.